Hey everybody, I'm B. Jemine, aka The Terrible Australian of Supermarcy.com, and welcome to my video review of the Transporter Refuel, which of course is the fourth installment of the Transporter franchise. Uh, so let's get right into it. Now, before I go into my thoughts on this fourth film, um, I'll talk about you know what I thought briefly about the first three films. Um, I thought the first film, The Transporter, was a pretty solid, decent kind of action film. It wasn't anything particularly amazing by any stretch of the imagination, but I thought it was, you know, decent fun, and, and of course, you know, Jason Statham was a badass in it. But I will state, though, I really liked the sequel, uh, The Transporter 2, which I thought, yeah, I know, I can understand some people not liking that one, because that one was very over-the-top, very cartoonish, and... And all that, but that's what I really liked about it. I liked that the fact that it w didn't real didn't take itself seriously at all, and that it was over the top and bombastic when it came to its action and story and all that. And I really enjoyed it. And in my opinion, it's the best one of the series. Um, unfortunately, though, the third film, uh, the Transporter Three, I did not like at all. I thought that one was absolutely dull. I mean, it had. A couple of cool action set pieces, but other than that, I just found that incredibly boring, and it just seemed like everyone was going through the motions, even Jason Statham as well, so, um, so yeah, I didn't really like, uh, the third one, but, so I was kind of, so when I heard about this fourth one, I thought, okay, well, even though Jason Statham decided not to come back for the series, they replaced him with, um, Ed Scrine, who, of course, for those out there who don't know who he is, he played, uh, the role of Dario in the third season of Game of Thrones before uh, he was offered this role and left the role to do this film. So uh, he was replaced by by Mikkel Hussman in the following seasons afterwards. So that, and I can understand that because you know he gets to be the lead of his own you know action franchise. So I can understand why he would leave uh, you know Game of Thrones to go do that and. Um, and also for a fact that uh, honestly, when I first heard about this one, I thought it was going to be a prequel because it was a younger Frank Martin and unfortunately, but, but having to sort of watch the film now, it's definitely not a prequel at all. In fact, it is the definition of a reboot. This one definitely is pretty much the start of its own series of films. Like it pretty much ignores everything that happened in the first three films. So basically this is definitely, like I said, the definition of a rebooted series because it's, you know, new actor and new stories and whatnot and probably, you know, more films in the future. Unfortunately, though, um, I'm not going to lie, I thought this film was terrible, to be honest, and I don't know why, I can, like I said before, I, I can understand why Ed Scrine would probably leave Game of Thrones to come do this film because, you know, I mean, he gets to play you know, starred the lead of his own film, and but unfortunately, I think he made a pretty uh, bad decision, because this movie, it was really bad, and I mean, really so. I thought the third film was really bad and dull, but at least, like, it had, you know, the occasional cool action sequence, and even though, he, like I said before, he was going through the motions, it had Jason Statham still, you know, being a badass, but unfortunately nothing about this film worked at all. Um, Ed Skrine tries his best, but unfortunately he's definitely no Jason Statham, unfortunately. And the action set pieces were just not, weren't good at all, and they were kind of just boring and dull. Like, you could tell at times they were going to go for, like, uh, kind of a raid type of feel with some of the set pieces, particularly sort of the fight sequences, but unfortunately this is sort of badly edited and badly choreographed, and there, there was nothing thrilling about them at all, and even the chase, like car chase sequences, weren't that interesting at all, and even the plot, um, which had potential, but unfortunately it just doesn't work at all, it's just boring, like everyone, it, it's just an incredibly dull, really dumb, and I, don't, and I love that dumb action movies, don't get me wrong, I mean, I enjoyed number two, so, but this one was dumb for all the wrong reasons, and just nothing about this film worked. Um, uh, Luke Besson, who kind of created the series, he co-wrote and produced this one, and yeah, he the script is just not good at all, and the director of this one is uh, Camille, Camille Delamar, Delama. I, I probably pronounced his name wrong. Uh, so forgive me if I have, um, but he, he was previous, this is only his second film, he previously made, uh, uh, Brick Mansions, uh, which, 
that film actually had some pretty decent action set pieces, but everything about that film just was kind of crap as well. But but this but trans the transporter refueled was definitely much worse. Nothing works about this film. The acting is bad. The script is bad. The action pieces are just like, action set pieces are really dull. The story just doesn't make any sense, and it it just. And also, it takes itself way too seriously. And, like, you know, Ed Skrine does get, you know, the occasional sort of one-liner and all that, but it all the one-liners just kind of fall flat and they're just not funny at all. Like, I think he does... He definitely does have presence. I, I will give Ed Skrine that. But unfortunately, I think... I think he tried to pretty much, you know, tried to act like Jason Statham rather than being, you know, his own person because it just, at times, it feels like he's just doing an impersonation of Jason Statham and unfortunately, it just didn't work and also there's some sort of, some aspects of the plot that kind of rehash things that we've already seen before in not only this series but in other action films as well and I will say the only bright spot of the film, I would say, is Ray Stevenson who plays um, Frank Martin's dad in the film. I thought he at least he tried to inject some kind of energy into the film and also some humor. But unfortunately, he's pretty much wasted as well. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, this this film was didn't work. It's definitely, without a doubt, the worst entry in the series so far. And that's saying something because I thought number three was pretty bad. This one, unfortunately, is much worse. So if I had to give The Transporter Refueled uh, a rating, i give it one star. It's definitely one of the worst films I've seen so far this year. Like, it had potential, but it just... Nothing about this film works. It just feels like like number three. Everyone just going through the motions. So, yep, that's the end of my video review of The Transporter Refueled. I hope you guys all enjoyed it, and I'll see you all later. See you, everyone. Bye.